Right, should we should we make some pirate noises? I can't! You can't, you can go, ahar, me hearties, arr, I can't! Pirates, I'm not, I be a pirate! <laughs> uh, that's not how the pirates speak in this episode, though, so I don't really know why I'm doing that. You want to create chaos. It is our time. Man the cannons. The ship is going down. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to my channel where I like to talk about all the geeky pop culture that I like and consume. Things like Star Trek, things like uh, Red Dwarf, things like Doctor Who. And we've got a brand new episode of Doctor Who which we need to talk about. Joining me is Paige. Hello. Uh, hello to review this episode with me. Um, we're going to be talking about the things we like, the things we didn't like, and anything else that comes into our heads. So, Paige, did you enjoy this episode? I would say what I liked, yes. Good. What did you like about it? Um, when the ship was like in this swirly thing and it went all the way up. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. When it was kind of moving up from up and down in the yeah, yeah. Vort, kind of weird swirly vortex whirlpool thing. Yeah, that looked good. A lot of this show was very. I would say this episode looked visually mm -hmm. beautiful. There were some really nice shots. So I will say that about it. It is. It was stunning. There was some lovely. <laughs> Uh, the sun shining on the seabed, the, like when they were shooting the cannons at the monster, that was lovely. The shot of the TARDIS underwater, what did you think about that? Did that look good? <laughs> did it look good? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just doing actions for people who can't, like, they don't hear anything. Oh, okay. Right. Your own special form of sign language. <laughs> Fair enough. Good. <laughs> inclusive things. Hope you can interpret it at home. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I think it looked visually stunning. The, the shots were lovely. It's a very... I mean, the whole of the Chibnall era has been a very lovely looking era in terms of the visuals. Uh, you can't... I don't think you can argue with that. It's looked lovely. And there were some brilliant shots in this. I thought it was odd that at the beginning with the villagers, most of them sounded like they had RP English accents. Uh, which kind of... Okay, the TARDIS translation circuits makes people sound English all the time. Uh, but this was before the TARDIS had turned up and Madame Ching has a bit of a accent. The other pirate guy that they bring from the past or has, uh, for the pirate guy from the past has a bit of a Chinese accent. But the rest of them, including the guy that ends up on the ship with them, the, the village boy whose dad gets killed. Very kind of English accent. And it just, I don't know, it just threw me a bit. I kind of expected a bit more of a Chinese accent with there. I don't know. That might just be me. But I don't know why it bugged me more here than it did in does in say like why don't in Pom fires of Pompeii why don't they have Roman accents I don't know it just it seemed to like it just bugged me a bit here um, in the uh, trailer breakdown we did in the trailer reaction you really liked the costumes didn't you yeah so did you like the costumes still here yeah what was your favourite costume Dan's costume. Dan's costume, the kind of like very over, the, and I like what they, I kind of like what they did with that. The kind of joke about Yaz making, tricking him into dressing up like a pantomime pirate. That was fun. I like it. It was all good. Um, I'm gonna look. Was there anything you didn't like about the episode? Uh, what did I like? <laughs> I don't know. What didn't you like? I already told you, but I forgot. Oh, okay. Well, if you remember, let me know. Because although there were some elements about this episode that I like, I kind of like the plot <laughs> structure. I like what they... the Yes? <laughs> I can end the now. What is it? What didn't you like? Um, when um, the pirate turned um, the village's boy's dad's face around, I was like, that's Oh, yeah, when, he, when the guy's dad got killed. and yeah. Was that too scary for you? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. It looked like blood. Yeah. Black blood. Yeah. So I like the story um, in terms of what the the whole pirate, you know, the the um, sea devil being trapped and then released and then having a crew and a ship and their plan to uh, to release, you know, flood the earth and everything. I kind of like all that. And I like this. I like the general gist of the plan, but I don't think the execution was handled massively well. Like, I like the plot, and I like the fact that they're bringing back the Sea Devils. But a lot of it felt really clunky. 
and the ex- so much exposition in this episode from everyone, from the Doctor, from Dan, that Dan has random lines get, talking about bits of history, like, oh yeah, didn't so-and-so happen to so-and-so? Like, why does he randomly know this? It's really strange. Um, and then, you know, they got the other pirate guy when he's in the stasis tube, spewing exposition to the Doctor, while the Sea Devil is right there, kind of just letting him give all this information to the Doctor, which is going to be bad for the Sea Devils. It seemed a really weird decision. And uh, who else? The Sea Devil themselves, the Sea Devil leader, lots of exposition. There was so much clunky exposition in this episode that it really dragged it down. And I'm afraid to say it made what is a good story uh, just hard to watch a bit. And I don't like saying that, but I just... It, I, I was a little bit disappointed. I'm <coughs> disappointed. You weren't disappointed. No. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I enjoyed a lot of it too. There were there was also stuff I really did like. There were moments I liked, like the visuals, as I've already mentioned. Yes? And I, um, I want to watch the next film now. <laughs> the, next, the next one isn't on for a few months. We'll have to wait for that one. Oh, but there's Daleks, my favourite. There are Daleks, yeah. My we saw the next time. bad guy. Yeah, yeah. But, that, you know, I don't want to be completely down. I just think that there was a lot of missed potential in it. A lot of... I think it, I think the writing could have been a bit sharper and a bit stronger. And they could have done more showing, not telling. Um, because they used a lot of exposition. And, um, and, and it was just a bit clunky, I think. And it wasn't good exposition either. Do you know what exposition is? No. No? Exposition is like when they give you information about what's happening by telling you rather than showing you and like like i said about the sea devil que- questionable like decisions why it just let the people the pirate just give them a load of information which would help the doctor against the sea devils i don't know and dan randomly going off with the guy leaving the doctor and you know not knowing that the doctor had left had just decided to swim to a pirate ship with this random stranger why? Like, what What are you thinking, Dan? <laughs> is that meant to be a character flaw? Or is that just bad writing? I don't know. Um, yeah. But there were things I did like. And there were elements, there were scenes in it that I really liked. Um, like, I've already said a lot of the visuals. I like the big monster thing. You like the big monster thing, don't you? Huh? The thing underwater that oh, yeah. gripped the um, TARDIS? No, that was my other scary thing. That was your other scary thing, but you said you liked it as well. Or did you not like it? I don't. I didn't like it, but I liked it when they were underwater. I'm um, just looking at the nice view. Gotcha. Yeah, that was good. And and now, okay. I'm I'm gonna get to the positives in a second. But the pirate queen, who I liked, I liked the pirate queen, Madame Ching. She was uh, the actress did a fantastic job with with what she had, and I think she was engaging to watch, and I liked her. But I do think she was wasted a little. There was one line in there very early on that was clearly there just to give her, make her a bit more sympathetic where she talks about her children being taken hostage and that's why she's doing what she's doing. Great that it gives her that motivation and makes her more sympathetic to us, but also it never comes up again. I mean, the, the, the hostage situation does, but the fact about her children... Her three... Is it three-year-old child and another... No, three and six. Yeah, three and six year old child have been taken away from her. Uh, that is, there's so much potential there, and they never go back to that. They ne- we never do like they don't even we don't even get a reunite them seeing them reunited at the end. There's no emotional payoff to that, and that's a real missed opportunity. I think I know they've only got fifty minutes to deal with, but I don't know. It's just that just seems like such a waste of her character. But she did a fantastic job, like, in what she was given, the actress. I, I did really like the Sea Devils. I was a bit um, apprehensive when I saw the stills of them that their face wouldn't move enough, that they were going to be a bit too static. And, yeah, maybe we could have done a bit more with CGI, but, again, that would have increased the budgets. They were they were good enough, and I think they did a good job of replicating and honouring past designs and looking like they're the same creature as as we had in the classic series but modernising it. I thought they did a good job with that. And there were some nice character moments for our main cast, for all of them really, because you've got the Thasmin stuff, which I really liked in this episode. I thought they did a really good job of it, of addressing it, of um, oh, putting... No. Oh dear, you've just dropped, broken your bracelet. Oh dear. 
I'm sorry, that just happened. It just happened. Um, uh, yeah, nice character moments in this episode with Dan uh, having that moment with Di at the end. I thought that was quite nice. And he'd had some nice moments, not necessarily emotional character moments, but like some nice moments throughout the episode. I thought Dan was better utilised in this episode than he was in either the Daleks. So that was nice. But yeah, the Thasmin stuff, I thought, was well dealt with. They had uh, a difficult path to navigate because we only have one episode left it's not like they can start a proper relationship and i think they addressed it and it's not going to please everyone some people are going to have wanted them to kiss or something but i like that they where they left it and the fact that the doctor um actually gave her answers and explained why she feels she can't get into a relationship can't anchor herself to one person as she says because it will involve pain later on but Yaz has a nice comeback about you know you do it anyway because that's what love is and or or something like that and I thought that was a nice line and it leaves it open for something maybe more to happen in the centenary but also we know they can't they're not going to carry on together into Russell T Davis's era so something's going to have to split them apart at the end of the next episode so there's a lot there's a lot that I think they did a good job of it, I think. And it was a very touching scene. There were some nice lines in there. I liked it. The sword fight. I loved the sword fight. Brilliant choreography. Uh, and I liked it too. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? All the swashbuckling. That's what you want in a pirate adventure, don't you? You want a bit of swashbuckling adventure and we got that. It was a nice, nice length scene. No, it, yeah, it was good. I enjoyed that a lot. And there were lots of moments in this episode where I did enjoy the individual bits. Why does that say you liked and then land? Oh, that's just my random notes. Don't worry about that. So overall, uh, this episode, I have to say, was a little bit of a disappointment for me. Um, I thought it was a bit clunky in places, but there were... I liked the story structure, and I think it could have been... Uh, it, it, I, the story wasn't the problem. It was the writing of the story, I think, and the too much exposition and wasted potential of some characters that was the problem. <laughs> There were still moments in it that I liked, though. There were still some lovely moments for the characters and some great acting from the cast. And as I said, some stunning visuals. So it's not all bad, but I left it feeling a little underwhelmed, let's just say. Let's hope the Centenary Special, which we got a nice trailer to, has Ace um, and uh, somebody whose name's gone out of my head. Is it... um, one of the other companions gone out of my head. Why has that gone out of my head? I don't know. But uh, in the next one, so that's exciting and looking forward to that. And, and we'll be here. Maybe, maybe Paige will. I will. Cool. To review that one too. Thank you for watching. Um, Wait, I need to say something. Okay. Um, on the next episode, it's a Dalek one, my favourite villain. It does look like this Daleks in the next one, yeah. Yeah, so that's good. We'll see you then. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And there's another one. What? Robo-man. Cybermen. Cybermen. Yeah, they're in there too. Thanks for watching, and we'll say goodbye. See you then. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.